Guys, just pay attention to the warning that's on the screen. Never work on a hot exhaust manifold. Just wait until it cools down before doing anything. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a quick look. EGR or exhaust gas recirculation. This means that exhaust gas is recirculated into the engine and it's controlled by an ECU. And you'll find it either the front under the front seat uh, on a Defender 300 TDI or elsewhere in different vehicles. It takes inputs from the following: engine temperature from a coolant temperature sender, throttle position, and engine speed. Okay, so basically, when the correct signals are received, the EGR solenoid allows vacuum to open the EGR valve and recirculation a portion of the exhaust gases. A couple of things here you've got to look at is the word vacuum, solenoid, and recirculation of a portion of the exhaust gases. The electronic control unit is under the seat on the Defender. I guess because Land Rover run out of places to put ECUs. So you can see this is the diesel EGR electronic control unit. This controls the signals that are inputted to it. You also have the throttle position sensor on here on the um, fuel injection pump. And here is the valve which is controlled by vacuum. And you also have the signals come back from it. Okay, so there is actually a vacuum pipe that should fit on there. Um, when it's lifted, it lets gas through here back into the inlet system through this pipe here. Right, so vacuum. Vacuum is taken from this T piece, which is on the servo pipe here. Right, that's the vacuum servo pipe. So it's a point to remember. It goes into this valve here. You can see the small plastic pipe. And then this is your vacuum pipe which fits on the EGR valve here, you can see the fitting and the vacuum lifts the valve open as required. Right, so vacuum, vacuum pipe here, you can see it's been blanked off with an M6 bolt. Remember this, because it's connected to your servo pipe, it's worth making sure that you do not have any leaks when you disconnect the EGR system. Okay, so the problem with EGR, it makes such a mess of the inlet tracks. Okay, so we're having a look in here, which is um, rather black. Looks like some smoker's lungs. This could be rather serious because it does choke the inlet manifold after a while. You can see there's a collection of soot, and this has oil in it as well. Not a very good state to be in. Now you can see the valve in here, this lifts off when the vacuum activates and it should suck a diaphragm and lift it off its seat. However, sometimes these also leak. Unfortunately, when you rev an engine, you can see this, it will also push the valve off its seat. You can see the smoke coming out there. So this, in effect, makes a mockery of the electronics. The best way to get around EGR or exhaust gas recirculation is actually blank it off completely so it can't let any of the exhaust gas back into the inlet tract and make a mess. If you have EGR still connected and it's not blanked off then it may pay you to take one of the inlet hoses off and take a damn good look at it. We've got a camera here which is quite easy to look inside but you'll see if it's clogged up. You've got to take immediate action and possibly clear out the inlet. However, this one also is collecting oil for some reason, which we'll look into later. So what I'm going to do is bring your attention to the um, Bearmark website. On their website, they have some catalogues and they also have an accessories catalog, which I'm now looking for, which is under downloads. Now, in this catalog, I must admit I've spent quite a bit of time browsing and dreaming about the stuff that we can be fitted to motors. Um, EGR blanking plate and some silicon hoses, which you're going to require to do this job, will be in this catalog. So I'll just expand it up here for you and we'll have a look. Just have a quick browse. You've got exhaust systems and here we go. There's the EGR blanking plates, which is on page 53. Browsing on a bit more, well, obviously, there's all sorts of goodies that could be fitted to Land Rovers like polyurethane bushes. Let's not get too distracted here at the moment. 
Okay, well, we'll jump back. And uh, it should be under exhaust. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, find exhaust. EGR blanking kits, right, page 53. So we have a blanking kit for the 300 TDI. And there are more up here for different vehicles, TD5s, uh, TDV6s, etc, etc. So you have a choice. Right, so generally if you're using a blanking plate like so and you're going to take the valve off, this means that you have an open inlet track that you need to sort out. You can't just leave the EGR valve dangling like that. What you'll need to do is use a complete new top hose like such. This way that's got rid of all the rubbish and to be honest with you it comes in nice colours and we've chosen green because we like green. They're also very easy to fit as well, as long as you've got some decent hose clips, you're okay. Right, browsing through the Bearmark catalogue again, you have this on page 50, and there's also a choice of uh, intercooler hoses of uh, different colours for different vehicles. Right, so anyway, you could always put the blanking plate underneath the EGR valve, like so. Obviously you need to bolt the EGR on top of it but you will need longer bolts. These are M8 by 1.25. This way you can leave all of this intact. However, with these rubber hoses, especially after a certain age, they get quite worn, as you can see here. This one's actually gonna split pretty shortly. This pipe elbow is the turbo outlet to the piping, which is this, so we've replaced it, along with this one connection to intercooler. There's no direct replacement for the top two hoses up here. However, if you're feeling ambitious, this one here, you can always cut and do this with it. So you still have the integral parts remaining. Okay, so you might be lucky enough to be able to undo the bolts on your manifold to get your EGR valve removed. And you have to use an Allen key. If not, then there's a possibility of using heat on the bolts to try and get them unseized. Now, this could take some time. If you had oxyacetylene, you will be able to shift the bolts. However, butane gas, you might be lucky, you might not. We were lucky with this. This one's a discovery engine, which happens to be on a stand in a workshop. So we can go ahead and fit a blanking plate. Easy. However... Another option, and you can see the bolts have been undone on this one, which means there's access easy. We can put the blanking plate in here as such. You see that, that will stop the gas from coming any further. What you'll need is M8 bolts that have got smaller heads, okay, and they need to be longer. This way you can easily do it up, otherwise normal M8 bolts will not fit. Problem is, with this EGR valve, it can leak from this gap here. This gives you an issue where you have to change the EGR valve. But, with this one, we've managed to seal it off. Okay, so the system is now gas-free, as it were, and you will get fresher air and a slightly more perkier performance out of the engine. Now, you don't get this in the kit, but the orange stuff between the gasket is in fact Loctite 59020, which is a copper silicon, which is very resistant to heat, something like 350 degrees centigrade. This tube is about 10 years old. It doesn't go off until it gets hot. Just a thought if you're silicon mad. Right, so this flexi pipe, if you happen to be replacing the top hose, it actually flexes quite a lot and it'll expand when you accelerate and boost. This wastes just a little bit of energy, which would be better pushing the air into the cylinders. You could do this as an option, which is adapt to the pipe, cut off the EGR power and use a solid piece in the centre. This we've done because, yes, we did have a problem trying to get the bolts out, so we've blanked the plate off here and the EGR valve is not leaking. Right, so going back to what we were looking at earlier, we have a little bit of an issue with oil. Yes, there will always be a little bit of oil pushed up into the intercooler and into the uh, inlet area. Now, with the camera, this is possibly one way of checking it, is having a look to see how much oil is in the intercooler. And you can see the camera imaging here. There doesn't seem to be much at all, which is a good sign because there's not that much oil. It means the turbo hasn't failed. 
Looking earlier down here, we have oil from the inlet track to the turbo. So we might have a breather problem here. This is something that we're going to have to monitor over a period of time. Take the top hoses off and just check to see how much oil is in there. If it increases, then we're going to have to look a little bit further.